Those of you already familiar with our Parasite Science series may know this, but there are quite a few parasites out there that can manipulate the actions of their hosts. Like this, 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 and this. But what if I told you that there's a parasitic fungus that has this creepy ability? Let me introduce our guest star of the day, Entomophthora muscae, of the order Entomophthoralis, the parasitic fungus. Its scientific name is a bit of a tongue twister, so we'll just call it fly fungus, okay? It reproduces by shooting its spores into the air with a bang, letting the wind carry its spores towards its next host, usually a house fly or fruit fly. How this fungus controls its host may be unnerving. Back in 2017, a charming zombieologist named Carolyn Elia conducted a research project where they infected fruit flies with the fungus and observed their behavior. For the first 24 hours after infection, the flies didn't display any abnormal symptoms. However, after 48 hours, the fungus began infiltrating the fly's nervous system. At 72 hours, the fungus began digesting the fly's insides from within, multiplying rapidly and distending their abdomens. Here's where things got serious. Around the 96-hour mark, the fly's abdomens began turning white from the rapidly growing fungus, which also reached the fly's brains, making them do something quite strange. They began climbing to higher areas. Upon reaching a sufficient height, their mouths elongated until they hit the surface they were standing on. A sticky liquid excretes from their new snout, securing them in place. The researchers noted that the flies couldn't move an inch once they had glued themselves. Researcher Elia also mentioned that there's a good chance this sticky substance was produced, in part, by the fungus itself. Anyway, after the flies were secured in place, they slowly raised their wings over the course of 10 minutes. Once those 10 minutes were up and the flies' wings were raised, that was it. The wing raising is also part of the fungus's plan. Why did the fungus make the flies raise their wings, you ask? Well, doing this helps the fungus spores spread as far as possible. Once the flies died, the fungus slowly began seeping out from the flies' abdomens. The fungus's bumpy hyphae formed bell-shaped guns on the flies' abdomens, each containing countless spores. Finally, the bells go off with a bang. With this burst of spores, the flies truly meet their demise. Now you can see why the flies had to raise their wings. If they hadn't, the spores would have stopped in their tracks. Climbing so high up, doubtless also played a role in helping the spores spread as far as possible. These spores spread to other flies, thus infecting them and starting the cycle anew. Interestingly, the flies affected with fly fungus only climbed to their deaths at dusk. Wanna guess why? It turns out, it's because fly fungus likes lower temperatures. So basically, everything the flies did post-infection, from climbing to a high place as the sun went down, to raising its wings, was done to help the fungus spores spread as far as possible. Seeing this whole process unfold, researcher Elia said something to the effect of, This system is crazy. Another surprise, Professor Mullins of University of California, Riverside, observed male fruit flies mating with deceased females that were infected with fly fungus. Professor Mullins hypothesized that the males viewed the fatter females as being more attractive. In short, fly fungus utilizes the physical symptoms of its infection to seduce male flies, infecting them and hitching a ride, ultimately spreading to new places. For a fungus whose primary directive seems to be reproduction, this is like Christmas coming early. It may come as a relief to hear that this fungus can't affect humans. Seeing this, Professor Mullins began researching whether we could use fly fungus as a pesticide for fruit flies. Unfortunately, fly fungus spores have a short lifespan and are quite difficult to grow in the lab, making it difficult to use as a pesticide. Although, the researchers did find one way to use this fungus to stop an outbreak of fruit flies, leaving the body of a fly infected with fly fungus in a room or barn. Remember that the fungus isn't consciously trying to control the fly's actions, though. 
It's just that, through the process of natural selection, fungi that were better able to infect flies survived to reproduce. Isn't it amazing what evolution can accomplish? Science is a window to the world. Yikes! Gives me the willies. Thank you for watching.